Thank you for joining me today. I went round to my friend's house the other day and picked up two small, soft cornice boards. The other week I had pre-made curtains sent to me by her, which I made pinch pleat curtains from. This time I am going to be taking the pre-made curtains apart to redo her cornices. So let's get on with it. I've taken the original valance off the board and I know that I have enough fabric to go from this pleat here all the way across through this pleat and into here. So I'll be able to do one main panel across there with parts of panels either side. So that's quite handy to know. The next thing I need is the height of this. They've made their cut length 20. The height of the balance is 14. I think I'll cut mine at 18 and save a little bit. It would be nice if I could run the fabric sideways, but she already has the curtains hanging up, which means that I don't have that option. The first one I'm going to cut, I'm actually going to cut at 19. So I'm going to measure to the bottom there up to 19 for this one, and the next two I'm going to cut at 18. And the reason is I can cut this along the threads here to make sure that they are straight. Where I've cut the top of the curtain, it might not be that straight, but I shouldn't lose too much if I cut it like this. So I'm going to cut all the way across for three panels. Now this is the one that was cut at 19 inches. I'm going to fold it in half like that. Once it's in half, I'm going to cut a little mark there, and I think I can cut like I did a second ago, which is up the threads. It would be straighter if I do it that way. And then I'm going to fold it in half and cut it up again so that I have four equal parts. Those are the last folds that go around the corner of the valance. I'm also going to straighten up the sides of these. I'll start where it looks to be the narrowest area and then just cut along until it's nice and even. It'll just take me a little minute to get those nice and neat. I have a straight bottom edge here and the straight bottom edge of there. I'm putting those two together and then going to run the seam along here, forward and back at the bottom. Straighten it out. Don't pull one against the other. They've got to be even. Now because there's no right or wrong side to this fabric, I'm going to keep the wrong side uppermost. I'll just pop that under there for a second. This is the second outside. Pop that underneath the top fabric there and start on the bottom hem again like I did. Fold them back and then all the way across like I did on the other end of this balance. I'm going to cut out the lining for this. So I'm going to run the outside edge of my fabric here at 18 inches across and cut straighten fabric out run your outside edge and measurement together and then just cut on up in a straight line now i'm going to cut up the length of fabric because i don't want any joins in the lining i dislike that it's going to take a little minute to get all of this cut out now i took the lining off the original and i was going to interline so it looks a little bit more full i'm not sure if you can see this this is the blackout lining which is a really white color. Here's the thermal lining that they used and you might be able to tell, I'm not sure, but there is certainly a different shade going on. Now if I pick this fabric up it's not exactly white, it's a little bit more this color so I think I will still use this. I've just ironed this seam open which I'm going to lay on top of here. Now remember that there is actually a right side and a wrong side to black outlining. The right side is the side that you can see the fabric has been woven and then they put a finish on the other side which is the wrong side. I remember years ago walking in on one of the girls that worked for me and she was busily sewing black outlining in with the wrong side out so we had to put a stop to that quite quickly because it was quite a large order that was going out. I'm going to put that there so the two right sides are together and then I'm going to put the right side of this fabric 
facing down, pin it along the bottom edge of the whole length. And I also have to make sure that I don't have any threads left between here and here as they will show through. So I've lined everything in here and you'll see that none of these lines up. I'm going to leave it until I've sewn the bottom edge into position. I'm going to start off and put the lining down here. I'm going to see which way works. One side might work better than the other. But hopefully it'll be this side. Pop that down, pull the first pin out and forward and back. Then hold all of that into position and sew on down. I'm not pulling it, I'm just holding it. If anything walks, it's going to walk on top. See, this one's already starting, so I'm going to pull that pin out and push that towards the next pin. I'm not pulling, I'm just holding. Reline and carry on going. It's quite a bit of walking, so I'll remove that pin. Reline everything into position. Make sure that the seam is open. Pull everything back towards there and then sew. Pull the pin, make sure everything is in line. And I'm doing that all the way across the bottom of this balance. Now, this is why I didn't cut it all back because this fabric walked far enough into place that I didn't need to. I will, however, cut this in line now that I know how far along it goes. Having folded this so that the bottom there is equal, like that, the top is equal, I'm going to just cut along this fold line like this and that is one of my panels. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with the second one. This is where I treat this piece of fabric and the top fabric as one. Iron those together like that so that I have a nice finish here. Push it away and iron it into place and I'm going to use plenty of steam because I don't want any creases. This is going to be steamed a few times before I'm really happy with it. And then I can see if there's any marks that show through as I go. And there's something there. And sure enough, there's a little spot of dust. As I go across, I'll find others, I'm sure. And I'll roll it like this as I go so that I can get it all nice and neat. Because the last thing you want is some dust or threads that's thrown in between the two layers, especially with white fabric or a light fabric that is quite thin. White can be very stark or you can warm it up. So I just carry on all the way along this width. I folded this down into the base, which I'm going to use as the hem line of these. All I'm going to do is kind of pull it down into there and then steam all the way across. Roll it and steam it until you're happy with it. I think I'll be okay. I don't think I have to pin that. Sometimes I pin them if I feel the fabric is going to roll. I'm going to work my way all the way down to the other end. Make sure it's nice and even. Then just iron the top into place. Again, plenty of steam. This is when you can see how everything is working out. These just always need a lot of ironing to crisp them up. I'm going to mark up as I go. Put the measuring stick there, marked 14 inches here and then I'll do the next section. This keeps everything in line as you go. And I can do the same here. Having ironed this over like that and into place, I am going to cut this back slightly here so that I can roll that underneath without making it too bulky. Because it's got interlining on here, it will be a little bit lumpy. All the way down to the bottom. Then I will fold in this side like this all the way down and iron that also into position. Should be about an inch wide. And I'll do this on both ends of each valance. Push that up because I don't want that showing at all. Let's start here on the end. These already had a weight in. They weren't sewn in, they were just slotted in. So I'm gonna slot that back in there like that. Wrap that round there. Push that up a little bit, I think. Make sure your tails are up. You don't want those poking around. Once it's nice and neat, sew across the bottom of the opening because you don't want your weight falling out. And it's a ladder stitch, so you go in to each side opposite of where you came out. So I came out there, I'll go opposite into there. Now I'm not doing it right on the bottom edge, I'm just doing it inside so that it looks nice and neat on the bottom. Pull that through. Up and towards the corner, like that. Pull it a little bit tight. You don't want it to be too tight that it wrinkles, but tight enough that it looks neat that back underneath there like that and catch it and sew it into place all 
the way up and I'm still going to use the ladder stitch. You could do this on a sewing machine, it was originally done on the sewing machine. Make sure you do not come out on the front side of the fabric and they can be about a quarter of an inch long, they don't have to be terribly small. After all it's really to tack everything in place. I've doubled over the thread because I couldn't find any upholstery thread. Pull it so it's nice and even and make my way to the top. But I'm not pulling it too tight, semi-loose so it hangs nicely. Do this on both sides of your valance and keep it close to the fold. And I usually do three or four stitches and then pull it through. I'm actually glad that I did put the old lining back in as I look at this the top here to me looks like a grey white, which I'm sure she wouldn't want hanging up. And here it's a nice warm off white, which looks a whole lot better. I will remeasure the end to make sure it's 14 inches. Because this is inch piping and I don't have any, I'm going to quickly take it out of the original cover and recover it. I did try pulling it, but it just didn't want to be pulled out and I don't really want to wreck what's there because it's like a cotton inside a knitted tube. I am going to cut two lengths at four inches to go around the piping and I'm going to just cut all the way across like I had earlier when I was cutting the panels for the valance. I'm using a universal zip foot here. Wrap that with that, slide it underneath and sew it into place. I've just got to make sure that everything is kept even as I go down. So there's a line here. I'm going to put the seam allowance along there. And if I keep the outsize even and push the piping in, it should work out okay. The whole idea is that the front of the piping looks even over the top of the board. And I'll do that all the way down this length of fabric. Now I did quickly press the fabric. I'm using for the piping cord because it was very crinkled but I didn't do a great job. Double check if you've got pale colours anything can make it look a bit funky. If I had enough interlining I would have put that on. I was just hoping that this would work but it doesn't. Just like I did before I am going to line everything up and pop it underneath here. I have the two layers of fabric for the piping and all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all four pieces running together. I have to do that otherwise I'm going to end up with a little bit of a wrinkle underneath which I don't want and I am going to just run it along that line that I had done a short while ago. Sew a little, reorganize a little and put it into place again. I'm going to hold that there for a moment. Line that fold along here to the back of the valance. Come along to the centre here. There's my centre marked there and the centre mark there. Again, the fold that I've ironed in goes along the top here and into place. And now I'll do this end. I can't remember if I actually filmed putting the other one in at this point. But basically, once you've got your centre point in and your end here, you would put your pleat in here and securing it and then you'd pull this out and centre it and then work your pleats out either side so that they're even. Fold that into place and secure. Now I'm just going to pop the piping on the top. I'm going to take that to the back here. Run the sewing line across the edge of the wood and I'm going to make my way across the top here. In the corner I'm just going to fold the top like that and secure. I used to be able to secure these to my workbench but I don't have a workbench anymore so I have to make do. Even the top fabric out. I'm reusing the back tacking. It's only there to hold things. It's not to look pretty or anything. Once that's in place just pull the fabric over to the back and secure the dust cloth along the back edge here. For what I'm doing and where it's going, I really don't need this. But if you were to be able to see down from the top of a set of stairs, then it's really important that you cover the tops of these. And then fold that into there and tack everything down and into place so it looks neat. Tuck away any loose threads. Thank you for joining me. This is how the balance has turned out. 
I'm going to just tack in the corners because they're just not holding very well. It's partially the thickness of the fabric with the lining and the interlining. I think she's going to be thrilled actually once they're hanging. Although the curtains are in the next room, the colour should remain quite even throughout the two rooms that these are all hanging in. So, if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe, hit the bell button, and a few thumbs up would be brilliant. And in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao.